All right, so here's a few pictures uh, for comparison on the size. If you remove the BMS, the battery is actually a little bit longer. The battery pack is also a little bit less thick. And this is what the GTX looks like. Once you remove all the electrics, it's got um, it's already milled out from where the previous battery was. I think it's about five mil deep. The 30Q pack uh, weighs 3.6 kilo. Weighs the same as the old battery pack, but the old battery pack does have the BMS in there. All right, so it's not that difficult. You just cut the uh, heat shrink off. The BMS is um, it's just sticky taped on there. So just cut all the sticky tape off as well. I decided to have a go at soldering myself. So I went and bought a cheap $25 soldering iron and it was crap, it didn't get hot enough. So I just ended up paying someone to do the soldering for me, which cost 15 bucks. So it's P1 here, or P negative. And then it says P negative up there. And I don't know if you can see that, but it says B negative there. So that's B negative. I just gotta figure out where this one goes. Ah, oh. right there. C negative. That one there. Sweet. Easy peasy. So the 11 pin plug is glued on. Glued on. So once everything was soldered, and everything was connected. This is what uh, mine looked like. I put double-sided tape on the BMS and stuck it on top of the mo motor controller so it doesn't slide about when I'm riding. Uh, I couldn't get it exactly center because the wires weren't long enough, but it's not a big deal. Also, I thought this black wire here was the receiver, but after I took my Gen 2 bamboo apart, I think it's actually the thermostat thing that senses whether the batteries get too hot, so make sure you attach the wire onto the batteries. But for now, I haven't had any problems yet. I've gone on two and a half rides and nothing's caught fire, so I actually don't think it's long enough to reach the batteries, so yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I might just leave it how it is. I might take it apart just, just to check. Also, my battery pack was just a few mils a bit too wide and it would push uh, the the, uh, the casing out and the holes wouldn't align, so I just used the hand router and took a little bit off the little plastic bit there. And yeah, everything fit. Uh, I put um, just like a piece of rub in between as well, the battery and the battery case, just for a bit of dampening. The hardest part about the upgrade was probably just routing a hole to make space for the BMS on the board. I've never routed before, but I got the hang of it pretty quick. The only problem is the board isn't flat, so it is a little bit difficult to route perfectly. Uh, I bought this hand router off eBay, $44. And then the routing bit cost me $20, so yeah, it wasn't too expensive. And just take your time with the routing. At one stage, the sawdust started to smoke a little bit, but no big deal.
This is what the flex was like after I routed. And this is what it looks like once it was done. I have heard stories about the board cracking when you route into it, but so far that hasn't happened to me. Um, maybe if you're on the heavier side, you might not want to go the routing way, but I'm only 70 kilos, so. Once I put everything together, I still had like a half a mil gap between the battery case and the board. So I don't think I routed deep enough. So when I had some spare time, I just routed it a little bit deeper and problem solved. Uh, when you're removing the little white clips from the motor controller, I used a, I used tweezers and it made it much easier. So yeah. And the reason why I chose to route instead of using a spacer, uh, basically I just want it to look as stock as possible. And I just like it the thinner, the better. You know what I mean? All right, so thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll do a range test and climb a few hills, see how much less sag I get. So yeah, stay tuned.